Welcome to DeFi, the podcast making the most important projects in DeFi easy to understand and accessible to all. This week we speak to Alex Smirnov, CEO and co-founder of DeBridge. Good morning, Alex. Thanks for being with us today. Please tell us who you are and how did you get into crypto? What is your rabbit hole story? Hi everyone, my name is Alex. I'm CEO and uh, co-founder at DeBridge. So my career in Web3 started back in 2016. Um, back then I was doing actually kind of academical research and was, do- was working on my PhD in mechanics and mathematics. And just at some point, I, like my friend sent me the article about the BitShares protocol. And uh, he just said, like, take a look, like the, that's the interesting kind of technology. And yeah, my, my topic of my thesis was kind of indoor navigation and like mathematical methods for indoor navigation. The blockchain was like completely new kind of space for me. And I just like opened that article, started to read. And um, yeah, I was kind of fascinated by the uh, technology and overall approach. And um, yeah, I think that like BitShares is actually the very first DeFi protocol. It's like the very first DAX. And moreover, it's the very first algorithmic stablecoin because there was like BUSD. And that seemed to be quite interesting for me. And um, the same team, like the guy who created BeChair, the like Dan Larimer, he also created uh, Steemit. And that was the very first decentralized social platform based on Steam blockchain. And I just like published my first post there and introduced myself. And then, and then kind of created the article, like popular science article about math or some mathematical algorithm. And then at some point some whales, like steam whales, liked or upvoted my article and I got like $1,500 payout. And uh, I just like spent a couple of hours there and uh, I was a student, like PhD student, my, my kind of uh, monthly uh, compensation was like $100 or so and I was like what what's going on here with the steamed and I just like decided to dig deeper to understand better the technology started to develop uh, some kind of products and um, interesting solutions for beach shares and at the same time became the part of steamed community so yeah that's like how what, what was my uh, journey to join this fascinating web3 world from that moment how did you end up building the bridge and uh, how did you identify that problem to be solved yeah that was an interesting story as well so after joining like steamit and bitchers community i just started like to be the kind of uh, external developer where i helped different teams to work on various solutions and at some point many different like teams started to reach out to me asking for for help and I just realized that like I'm, I cannot scale up efficiently without the team. And uh, back in 2017, um, I founded Phenom, the blockchain development agency. And actually, I founded it together with another co-founder of DeBridge. And we just started to help others like to do research and to develop different uh, blockchain connected solutions and dApps. And um, yeah, we scaled up our team quite quickly. At some point, we had like 30 people and we were helping to build like crypto custody solutions uh dApps and we also like to have fun to have fun and like participate in various hackathons and we won many hackathons and uh, as you, as we know like back in 2018 the bear market started everything kind of slowed down and the ico narrative was not that good anymore and overall sentiment was bad and um, like we, we started to receive less orders for the uh, development of blockchain solutions. So we, we, we needed to pivot. And uh, what we started to do is to apply our mathematical kind of algorithms and overall math knowledge to start trading. So we, we started to do some kind of quant trading and on-chain arbitrage. And uh, in 2020, I think the BNB chain was launched at somewhere and the DeFi space started to shaping up. Uh, like the compound appeared and there were like really 
lots of opportunities in terms of like MEV and trading and we constantly needed to kind of balance or to transfer liquidity between different chains and the only way to do that was to use, to use centralized exchanges and when you tap into arbitrage market probably centralized exchanges do not like that and they start kind of block your account as for proof of source of funds and so on and uh, we got our accounts like blocked many times and th there was like there were a lot of kind of paperwork that we needed to do in order to unblock it and at some point it started to be so annoying that I said like okay we need to solve this problem in a truly decentralized way we need to build a technology that will enable transfers of any liquidity and data between various blockchain ecosystems mm -hmm. but we actually needed something to trigger the development because we were still kind of uh, involved in the development of our algorithms and uh, we just found out about the hackathon Chainlink Global Hackathon that was like beginning of the last year 2021 and decided to participate to switch a bit and to have fun and uh, the idea that we developed during the hackathon was the debridge actually the technology to transfer um, like data and value between chains and eventually we won the hackathon got the first place among more than 140 projects worldwide got really good interest from various VCs and um, overall community um, and uh, yeah after that we just realized that it's like a big market and the big problem that we got to solve and um, after winning the hackathon like the entire team just started to be like fully focused on the development of the bridge protocol right and we come to the bridge protocol so if you were at a dinner party talking to someone who is new to crypto how would you explain the bridge in simple terms not as a five years old but maybe as a 10 years old yeah for 10 years old i would say that we are we are building an internet of blockchains because our global mission here is to interconnect all blockchain ecosystems to enable secure and efficient transfers of any uh, messages and value between between blockchains right because like by nature blockchains are kind of isolated environments and um, at some point we need to connect them all to provide freedom that's kind of financial freedom to users not only for users but also for financial uh, protocols and, and any kind of on-chain addresses that can that may need to interact with the smart contracts in protocols in other chains. So yeah, that's what like Dbridge is all about. It's secure interoperability, interoperability layer for Web3. Uh, but like simply speaking, that's kind of internet of blockchain because like in classical Web2 world, we have like servers, right? And we have the web applications that are interacting with servers through APIs and like interfaces and the overall experience is very seamless right when we work like when we use our gmail uh, we don't need to switch wallets or switch networks we just open the website uh, all the traffic is routed automatically um, like the balancing of the traffic happens like under the hood and in web3 world we still kind of need to switch wallet switch network understand what the what blockchain we we are interacting with and um, if we abstract that the blockchain is some kind of hosting as well right and uh, i think that the technology that we are building is some kind of uh, automated routing or it's some kind of tcp ip layer for the internet yeah, yeah. of blockchain so that any users can interact with the um, decentralized applications in the same way they interact with the web 2 world so that you don't need to think about anything you just open the website the DAP and you do any transaction that you want without thinking about gas without thinking about um, wallets because like all the like different wallets support different chains and we try to abstract that away uh, what makes the bridge unique compared to other cross-chain bridges? Yeah, that's a good question. And it also depends on what we put into the term uh, of bridge. Because for, for me, bridge is some kind of technology that enables transfer of like message, first of all, right? Uh, because historically, bridges were built as uh, technologies that allow only like cross-chain swaps or transfers of 
tokens. But actually the most challenging and the most important thing is to enable secure transfer of messages or data. Because if you have messaging framework, then you can build any cross-chain solutions or any cross-chain protocols such as value transferring bridges. And dbridge itself is the secure interoperability layer for Web3. So the foundational part is the generic messaging. So any on-chain addresses, any smart contracts can send message or any data through dbridge protocol. And this data will be automatically delivered or executed on the destination chain. And using this framework, we enable many cross-chain opportunities. And the one I'm super excited about is the cross-chain compatibility between smart contracts. Mm -hmm. Because the most powerful thing of DeFi is actually compatibility. We've seen many good examples like Convex and Curve or One Inch Indexes, where developers can combine various DeFi primitives. But all these combinations were mainly assembled within one specific chain. And um, imagine if we can assemble DeFi primitives on a cross chain scale, if we com can combine have a protocol in let's say polygon with uh, i don't know like mango markets protocol and so on and if we enable kind of global interoperability then the entire space can become way more efficient and uh, way more secure as well and that's what we are building like the overall technology to enable interoperability and communication between various blockchain ecosystems. In terms of difference between DeBridge and other protocols, there are many kind of uh, key differentiators. Uh, but in order to understand understand what interoperability is, we should like be able to classify bridges. And here I would say that there are like two types of bridges. So the first type is represented by canonical bridges. Mainly these are kind of trust minimized bridges that can connect only two chains or two ecosystem. Uh, usually these are ch like bridging technologies that connects like layer one and layer two, like Ethereum and Arbitrum or Ethereum and Optimism. And in this case, for canonical bridges, we can use light clients or full clients, right? So we can have kind of trust minimization because if there is a fork in the layer one, then we also have the fork in layer two. But if you have more than two blockchains in the set of supported uh, chains, then there is no way to pick fork efficiently. And uh, like any kind of interoperability layer that supports more than two chains, and that is not canonical, got to have validation layer, right? Um, because it all goes down to social consensus about forks, like what fork war was supported by community. And um, yeah, so basically like all the interoperability layers have have like validation, like external validation. It's all the matter of how this validation layer is designed. And there are many approaches. There is like optimistic validation or like ZK proofs or like Saxon proofs. But in general, it's just like different ways to implement validation. So in DeepBridge, we've taken quite a unique approach. We have like off-chain validation. We have the set of validator that listen to all the transactions passing through DeepBridge smart contract and they kind of validate transaction and sign the unique identifier and make signatures public. So we don't have any blockchain, right? And we, we truly believe that for interoperability, blockchains are not needed because consensus is settled on the destination chain anyway. And uh, yeah, so in our in our case, we just sign like validate sign transactions, make signatures public, and anyone can like deliver or um, execute message on the destination chain. But that's just one of the differentiators. Just to clear out, we mean EVM compatible chains, or do you see a future mixing with other compilers, other languages? Yeah, I think that like the overall Web3 ecosystem goes way beyond the EVM yeah. chains because we already have Solana, right? And Solana is kind of unique technology in a way they develop the overall ecosystem. So they didn't fork anything. They built it on Rust from the very beginning. And um, yeah, so for interoperability, I think it doesn't matter like whether it's EVM chain or not EVM chain. And that's the design that we have in Debris. So we actually already support Solana. And uh, just last week I 
published the video where we demonstrated the transfer of value between BNB chain and Solana. And we've kind of demonstrated the new approach, the new technology that we've developed that allows transferring any amount of liquidity with zero slippage and zero TVL. And uh, this tech is supported on Solana as well from the very mm -hmm. beginning. Because if you have generic messaging, you can build basically anything. And that's why like in Debridge, we also like to say that we are we are providing the cross-chain infrastructure for cross-chain anything. So if you can, if you want to build any cross-chain application, you can use it to achieve any kind of uh, cross-chain needs. Yep. Apart from the purpose of bridging different chains, what are the unique native cross-chain applications that you see possibly emerge in the future as this new frontier of interoperability? Yeah, <clears throat> there are so many. And again, so far, what I see that the main kind of application for interoperability is still like cross-chain value transfer mm -hmm. and um, this specific area is super challenging because historically all the value transferring bridges were built as liquidity protocols right they use continuously locked liquidity and uh, the smart contracts or like liquidity pools have been honeypots for hackers that's why during the last year alone we saw more than two billion dollars of value that was stolen from different bridges and i personally think that like this kind of approach where bridges are built as liquidity protocols is fundamentally wrong because there are many problems such as like capital efficiency and um, like the, the there are no profitable bridges so far like because uh, they like all the bridges got to run liquidity mining campaigns in order to retain liquidity and normally the rewards that are paid exceed the protocol fees collected. And um, we are in Debridge, we are trying to change this paradigm. So we designed a completely new architecture, a new approach that enables secure transfer of any amount of liquidity with zero slippage and zero TVL. Because if you don't have TVL, you don't have like honeypot for hackers. There, there are no attack vectors. The worst th thing that ha can happen is like the attack on one specific transaction and one specific order. And I think this is kind of new step, the new evolution of like the main application which is like value transferring bridges but in terms of the different cross-chain solution that can be built i'm super excited in general about like cross-chain compatibility where you can combine different DeFi primitives and um, i think cross-chain lending is one of the applications that we will see live in the very near future because we actually work closely with, with a couple of teams that are building toward this direction. Another thing that I'm excited about is the governance and on-chain on voting because if you have truly decentralized governance and voting mechanism, in layer one it can be expensive, right? Because like the gas is expensive and um, users are not motivated because sometimes the gas cost is like bigger than potential kind of incentive from the participation and the governance. And with cross-chain technology, what you can do, you can make the governance votings in side chains or like in layer twos. Okay. And so it's not just children contracts that grow independently, but there will be always the bridge messaging system across the different contracts to keep them in sync. Exactly, yeah. Okay. So Debridge is like infrastructure that can be used by any developers, any protocols in order to establish this kind of intercommunication. Mm. So you can have, let's say, governance voting in all the cheap blockchains such as Polygon, like Arbitrum, Optimism. And then when the voting is finished, you send the result, the smart contracts send the result through Debridge infrastructure to layer one to ethereum and then the result is settled on ethereum itself and in this case the like this is some kind of gas optimization because users have super cheap transaction and on ethereum you just click send one transaction that executes the result of the voting but there are so many applications that can be built it's just like cross-chain yield farming where you can provide liquidity to liquidity pool in one chain 
and then this the protocol can like automatically manage this liquidity and supply to different protocols or like liquidity pools across different chains so that's like there is a your finance but i know one team like astrolab they're building toward like cross chain yield aggregation that's quite interesting concept as well so yeah the like the set of applications go goes like beyond my imagination sometimes <laughs> because like when i talk to developers they're building some really interesting things and um, my bet is that like next bull cycle will be partially driven or maybe even fully driven by cross-chain applications because if you have like secure and decentralized interoperability layer you can build way more efficient and way more secure apps and protocols if you had to evaluate the potential risks and vulnerabilities in the bridge could be inner and external what would they be so yeah, in Debridge, uh, we pay a lot of attention to security and security ha has been our main priority from the very beginning. And that actually allowed us to put in various security measures into the protocol design itself. Um, so yeah, there are many different kind of uh, attacks that happened and two main attack vectors for the following. The first one is the vulnerability in the smart contract, right? And that's how the wormhole and nomad got hacked. So the if you have vulnerability in the smart contract, that basically means that the development process uh, were not kind of reliable because like there should be many reviews code reviews there should be like very strict pipeline on how the code is delivered to production uh, if the code is ready for production to be in production then there are security audits right and there should be at least like several independent security auditors who like thoroughly check the code base and work closely with the team then there are various bug bounty programs. There is a Munify, right? And um, bug bounty programs also help to prevent any kind of potential vulnerabilities. Then there is a Code for Ina. That's like the platform that allows to create challenges and uh, distribute reward, rewards among uh, white hat community, mm -hmm. among white, white hat hackers, if they find any vulnerabilities. So yeah, this is like how to prevent the kind of problems in the with the smart contracts and in deep breach we have like very strict uh policies in terms of how the code is developed how it's reviewed how it's like deployed to uh production counter we work closely with many security auditors halborn is doing a great job with auditing all our solutions and the thing is that in the bridge we audit not only smart contracts but every single line of code that we produce that comes to all the apis our front end the bridge nodes basically everything because like in web3 especially if you're building DeFi protocol you don't have a chance to make a mistake because like that's a big reputational risk and like we work with funds right we work with liquidity that's why in DeFi it's very important to think about security from the very beginning and um, in terms of bridges the another attack vector that happened um, was kind of lack of decentralization that's what happened with the Ronin bridge and with uh, horizon bridge from harmony so for them the attacker just managed to kind of compromise the infrastructure and get access to the validation node so validator like the attacker could sign any transaction or to forge transaction like using the private keys of the validators and um, yeah the the decentralization is important and um, in the bridge we think about this from the beginning as well so f so far we have like 12 validators but the thing is that in the bridge validators like never communicate with each other because we have off-chain validation they just sign um, unique identifiers of the transaction that are passing through the protocol so and then make signatures public so there is no networking and uh, validators do not need to broadcast anything they just kind of make signatures public and that's why there is no way to compromise the infrastructure of validators in order to do anything something wrong like the attacker will need to kind of 
compromised at least eight validators, right? So far out of 12. And that's the risk that validators bear because in deep breach validators also bear financial risks. Like why don't validators collude? Because we have the delegated staking and slashing module. It's, it's not deployed yet, but it will be live soon when we pass control of the protocol to governance. And when validators bear financial responsibility, they like they, they don't have any incentives to collude and the user that transfers value or like message through the debridge protocol always know the total collateral of validators and let's say if we have like 100 million dollars that's like financial responsibility validators then if you want to transfer 300 million you'll just split your transaction into three parts to make sure each dedicated part is covered by the collateral validator and the cool thing here is that we made this value transferring bridge to work asynchronously because we don't have any continuously locked liquidity so there is no liquidity at risk and when user transfers uh, liquidity he bears risks only until his transfer is executed and it's executed by anyone by taker i would say and taker bears bears risk only until the liquidity is unlocked on the source chain so if we if we make the asynchronous protocols on top of like asynchronous infrastructure then instead of chasing some kind of absolute decentralization what we can do is to provide the best financial guarantees to the protocol users yeah and this is kind of vision that we have in debridge because for interoperability layers that are not like canonical there is no way to build like absolutely trust minimized bridge there got to be validation layer but you can make validation layer to bear financial risks and you can actually bring some kind of insurance and financial guarantees to the end users very interesting is there anything holding you back in terms of project right now? Would you like to see something working better? Maybe it's related to future deployments that you have in mind, or maybe it's regulations and regulators and something that you know it's coming and, you know, hint to Alex uh, Pertsev and Tornado Cache. Yeah, in terms of regulation, so we are building a DAO, right? And uh, Debridge itself is the infrastructure that enables transfers of any like messages and information. Um, yeah, the question is here is like, do we regulate internet? Yeah, somehow maybe, but in general, you can always like switch on VPN, right? And still do whatever you want. Um, and uh, yeah, re re regulation is, is a really interesting thing. And you brought up the case of Alex Persev, which I think is quite insane because like Alex is the guy who actually innovated, right? He built like the open source software he developed very promising technology and that was not like that was not a bad technology that was technology that allows anyone to have privacy and any technology can be used like for good and for bad like email can be used for bad right as well but still we don't regulate emails and i think that the industry itself the best way to regulate is allow it to be self-regulated because like all regulation goes down to education mm -hmm. and if you educate people then they don't make a mistake right you just got to have some kind of financial understanding of how the technology works and like whether you want to interact with this technology or not um so yeah that's kind of my take on the vision in terms of holdbacks um yeah in debridge we i'm super satisfied how the technology works because we have like unlimited throughput we, we provide the best development tools for developers and builders who start to build cross-chain applications and we are like very hands-on working closely with teams that are innovating on a cross-chain space because we are trying to bring back the bull market sooner <laughs> together with other builders and uh, yeah so for us now it's all about adoption and scalability because i think that in debridge we managed to solve all the problems of classical bridges in terms of security capital efficiency and scalability because now we got the technology that allows transferring any information and liquidity simultaneously between different chains and basically we allow anyone to build 
any complex cross-chain interactions in a single transaction. So, and it's up to developers what to build, but generally speaking, you can, let's say, make a cross-chain value transfer and plus stake your liquidity to Aave, or you can do a cross-chain transfer and open up position on GMX. So any, anything can be done in a single transaction, and that's why I'm also saying that we are building kind of like decentralized internet, like internet of blockchain, because any user or even any protocol um, can become like interoperable and to interact with any on-chain addresses in other chains. And having this framework for us now, the main goal is the global adoption to educate people and educate builders on what opportunities cross-chain infrastructure enables, what applications can be built and how DeFi primitives can be combined. And from us, we just like, the goal is to provide the technical support and provide the best development tooling to make it easy building secure and reliable cross-chain solutions. Do you think that the bridge could be a protocol that enables governmental or institutional onboarding to Web3? And in what cases could that happen? I think that the bridge is the protocol that will enable transfer of classical equity markets on chain. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> because yeah, this this is how we will bring institutions, right? Because like now all the trading of like stocks and like capital markets is happening through the centralized infrastructures. Yeah. And the this way is not really efficient, it's not transparent at all. And my bet is that gradually all the classical markets will be moving on chain. And that's why we also see the involvement like of change, like Aptos, Sui, those who are like focused on the parallel execution and order books. And um, yeah, if we will see like traditional institutional players coming on chain, then regulators will probably come on chain as well. It's just like the role is, yeah, I can I cannot kind of predict what the role will be and how the um, process will be built, but yeah, the goal is of Debridge is the global adoption of the like blockchain technologies and to allow anyone to leverage cross-chain interoperability. And uh, we'll see how institutional players or anyone can can use it because we provide the decentralized technology, right? Anyone can use it. Any teams, protocols, institutions, any company. So. It's up to them and we'll see how the space will evolve. And I have no doubt that everything will kind of, will, will go toward the positive direction. Perfect. Is there something else that you are excited about the future of the bridge from here to in one year's time? Yeah, I, I'm very excited about all the protocols and applications that are built now because like many people were skeptical about interoperability and bridges after all the hacks. But I truly believe that we managed to build secure and reliable infrastructure that like solved all the problems that bridging space ha had before. And uh, we just need to wait until all these apps go live and um, until the adoption is happening and again, probably this will be kind of one of the main drivers for the next bull cycle. And uh, I, I think that like now it's a good time actually to build. And um, because during the bear market, there is no kind of distractions. And uh, anyone who start building now have bigger chances to achieve the product market fit before the um, before the next cycle. And uh, yeah, the, the, this was what drives me. It's like I created the infrastructure together with our team. We provide the infrastructure to build any cross-chain solutions, any cross-chain applications. And now our goal is just like to bring more developers, to educate and to see what ideas they will come up with. And in many times, these ideas are quite unique. And um, oh, what I'm excited about is that we just like facilitate the global adoption of blockchain technologies and uh, bring more people to Web3 space. And that's kind of global mission of all of us, of all builders, to bring the first like billion users into DeFi and Web3. Nice. 
Alex, thank you so much for being with us today. Wish you a great Web3 Summit and enjoy Lisboa. Yeah, thanks a lot. Pleasure to be here.